Uh, yes, go right ahead, sir. Okay, great. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Steve. I'm from Management Advisory Group, and I'm here today to um, give you an idea of how we're going to work our um, compensation classification study and how these uh, questionnaires we're going to talk about figure into the overall process of the study. Basically, we are a um, human resources consulting firm, and we've done hundreds of studies. We specialize with uh, sheriff's offices, school districts, counties, and municipalities. So just want to give you an idea of what we do. And this is some of the work that we've done in the past. Again, for Lexington, we're here to do a classification and compensation study. Some of the things I want to go over today before we get into the questionnaire itself, I just want to talk about the, um, the project goals and the scope, um, giving an understanding of how everything falls into place. And when we get more into the questionnaire, we're going to talk about the role of the employees and the supervisors and how they work as a team to complete the questionnaire. After that, we're going to get into the job profile questionnaire itself. We just call that the JPQ. And basically, I'm going to show you some actual pages from the questionnaire so it'll have some sense of familiarity to it when you log into it for the first time yourself. And then after we go over the questionnaire, we're gonna discuss some of the um, steps that are gonna follow in the process with the study once we're through the questionnaire itself. All right, the goal for this study is to conduct a comprehensive classification and compensation study for Lexington Fayette County. There are approximately 1,675 positions, including full and part-time that we're gonna be going over. And in those positions that encompasses about 370 different job titles. This next slide, I just like to go over the next two slides actually, they're gonna show you some of the things we're here to do and some of the things we're not here to do, just kind of put your mind at ease. Basically our top goal in this part of the process is to capture the most current information you can directly from the employees and the supervisors for the questionnaires. We're also gonna ensure internal equity and what I mean by that is, is we're gonna compare different job positions within the organization and make sure that um, they're being, that we're gonna find job titles, even though the titles are different, if the um, duties and responsibilities are the same, we're gonna make sure that the uh, compensation is equal also. We're also gonna identify um, adjustments to the current plan that you all are under. And then after that, we're gonna come up with a um, affordable implementation plan that we can present to the um, to the city and county. And last but not least, um, this isn't exactly a static study. One of one of the things we really pride ourselves on is we provide software that allows your human resources department to continue the evaluation process well into the future by providing some unique software to allow them to do that. What we are not here to do we're not here to identify any kind of staffing levels. Um, or we have that capability, but that's not part of this study. We will not be reorganizing departments or functions. Um, this next one is very important. We are not here to evaluate individual performance or capabilities. We're looking at this direct or specifically from a duties and responsibilities for that for the particular job titles, not from the person that's actually in the job right now. Um, we also have to be upfront about this. We cannot guarantee any salary increases from this study. We're gonna do the best we can to identify any shortages and make our recommendations. And on the flip side of that, we never recommend salary decreases. So if at the end of the study, you find yourself at the top of the pay level that we've recommended or even above it, there, there won't be any decreases. You'll just kind of be frozen in place until others kind of catch up to your level. This is part I was talking about a minute ago when we get into the questionnaire itself, how important it is for the employee and the supervisor to work together. We can consider the team of the employee and the supervisor as the subject matter experts. And basically all that means is that we, we can't think of anybody better to evaluate the job than the person that's doing it and the person that's actually supervising that job. The employee is gonna start out the process by filling out their portion of the questionnaire and that's gonna be the bulk of the information completed by the employee. The supervisor comes in after the employee completely finishes their evaluation or their questionnaire and they do their review. 
And during the review process, the supervisor cannot change any employee answers and they can't delete anything the employee has said. Their only role is to um, add to what's already been stated by the employee. And as a supervisor, you can either agree with what the employee says or disagree. And in most cases, what I've noticed is um, the supervisor's role is more positive than negative because if you have an employee that's um, fairly new to the job, or maybe they're just a little modest, maybe they're not gonna put as much information into their questionnaire as you would like. Maybe, maybe they leave out a key responsibility that you wanna make sure is covered. So the, the supervisor kind of goes in after the fact and fills in the gaps. So that's, that's where the role of the supervisor really comes in handy. Plus when we're doing the analysis back at our office after the questionnaire is complete, we get to see the perspective of both the employee and the supervisor on that job. And it does work the other way. If, if there was an employee that was um, acting like they, you know, they were doing every single thing in the organization and the supervisor has to go in there and kind of reel that in a little bit and put some perspective on it, that comes in handy also. All right, the job profile questionnaire, like I said, it's called the JPQ for short, is what we're gonna use to gather the majority of the information for our study. We're looking for 100% participation, but what we mean by that is, is we're looking to get at least one completed questionnaire for every job title. So I said earlier, there's 370 job titles. So if there's 50 equipment operators, we, we realistically don't expect to get a total of 50 questionnaires from all 50. I mean, if they do that, that's great. We just, we know that's not usually the case. One of the things we recommend to get around people that maybe don't want to participate on their own is we recommend a group questionnaire. And the way that works is if, uh, again, I'll use equipment operators as an example. If you have a, a group of equipment operators and they all have the same supervisor, they all have the same duties, and of course the same job title, they can get together as a group and complete one questionnaire as a group. And the way that would work, one person would log in under their employee ID and everybody would participate. And then at the end of the questionnaire, there's a place where you can put all of the people that participated in that particular questionnaire. And then we'll, we'll see that when we're doing our review later on back at the office. This is where we get into the questionnaire itself. This is our uh, homepage. It's um, www.magintl.org. Make sure you use .org, it's not .com. And when you put that link in, you're gonna come to our homepage. And what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down to the very bottom and in the left-hand corner, there's a spot that says job profile questionnaire. And then there's a blue login button. Click on that login button and you'll be on your way. It's gonna take you to a screen where you're gonna choose your organization. And we have you all listed as LFUCG space 2022. So just hit that drop down menu, it's alphabetical. So you'll be about halfway down the list and select your organization. Once you select the organization, it's gonna take you to the login page and for your employee ID and the password, it's gonna be the same number. It's gonna be your employee ID itself. Um, it's brought to my attention earlier that um, this requires six digits. So if your employee ID is only four digits, just make sure the first two digits are a zero. So zero, zero, then your four digits, or if it's, you know, whatever the number of digits is, make sure it adds up to six with preceding zeros. So once you get that number put into the, both the employee ID and the password boxes, you click on the login button. That's gonna take you to the first page where you're gonna, you're actually gonna verify your information. Now for, for the purpose of this slide, everything is blank, but when you open this up for the first time on your own, you're gonna have, your, your name's already gonna be in there. So is your job title, your department, your hire date, and the date that you started working in the current, your current position, which is basically your promotion date. So those things will all be there for you to review. We just want you to make sure that they're correct. If they're not, you do not have the ability to make the changes on your own. So you'll have to get in touch with human resources and they will in turn get in touch with us and we will update the database to make sure that we have the most correct information for each individual. Especially important are the hire dates and the, um, the date you start working in your current title because those, those numbers are gonna factor in heavily when we start figuring in um, time issues for your for your job. 
There is one box on here where it says working job title. That one will be blank when you open this up. And that is for you. If you think that your current job title is inaccurate or obsolete, here's your chance to um, enter what you think should be your, your new job title. And us along with HR, we will look that over. And if it's a good fit, we'll consider using that. Down at the bottom, this is also very important. This is where you select your immediate supervisor. This is gonna be the person that reviews your questionnaire. And for us, we consider the immediate supervisor, the person that, that, that does your evaluations each, each, year, each period of time, year to year. So that's the person you wanna select as your immediate supervisor. And by doing that, that's gonna link them to your questionnaire for them to do the review once you're done with your portion. This is what the beginning of the questionnaire itself actually looks like. This is the opening page. Um, first thing I would recommend, there's some um, blue buttons where it says above instructions. You wanna click on that expand all sections button. Basically this questionnaire is, is one long page. So you're just gonna be scrolling through it as you go along. So by expanding all selections, you'll be able to read everything within the questionnaire. If you don't do that, it's gonna be more of a condensed version and you won't be able to see all of the the wording and all the choices. So just make sure you hit that expand all selections button as you get started. And then there's a brief set of instructions up at the top. Basically it tells you what I just told you about expand all selections. And there's a few other comments in there also. These two buttons here, I wanna emphasize these. Um, the blue button, you're only gonna use that one time. That's gonna be when you completely finish with your questionnaire. You're gonna click the blue button and that's gonna take away any further editing privileges from you. And it's gonna send your questionnaire to your supervisor for review. The red button, this is for anytime you wanna save your questionnaire. We don't really expect you to do this in one sitting. It can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half, depending on how much detail you put into the questionnaire. So if you wanna complete it in multiple sessions, it doesn't have to be completed in any kind of specific order. You can uh, skip around from page to page and just complete it as you as you see fit. But just make sure that whenever you go to exit, that you click on that red button to save your questionnaire. And the good thing about these two buttons, uh, I mentioned that the questionnaire itself is, is um, gonna be one long page to scroll through. The whole time you're scrolling through the questionnaire, these two buttons are gonna be visible at the top. So they're, they're gonna be there as a constant reminder for you to use them as needed. One other thing I wanna mention about the saving the questionnaire, is if, um, if you're sitting at your desk and you're working on your questionnaire, and you're just gonna get up and leave for a minute and you plan on coming back, no matter how long you think you're gonna be gone, make sure before you walk away that you click on that um, save your red save your questionnaire button. If you end up walking away and you get delayed and you come back 15 or 20 minutes later, most websites, including ours, it's probably gonna log you out automatically if there's no activity on the keyboard for 15 or 20 minutes. So you don't wanna come back have to log back in and find out that everything you've completed in that particular session isn't there anymore. So by hitting that save button, you, even if you're only gonna be gone for a minute, you hit that save button on your way out. And if you come back and you've been logged out, you log back in and everything's right there where you left off. So just, just keep that in mind. And like I said, both of those buttons will be visible throughout the entire questionnaire. One more thing about the blue button, when you are completely done, once you click on that, it means that you, you finished everything you need to finish and you don't want to add anything else. And that's going to take away any further chances that you'll have to make any changes yourself. Um, one good thing about that blue button, if you're um, not completely done and you try to push that blue button, it's going to let you know that you're not done. It's going to highlight some sections down below that maybe, maybe you forgot to answer a choice. So you can't really hit that button until you're completely done. But once you do hit it when you're done, you are finished with your portion. This is one of the busiest pages on the entire questionnaire. It's the essential task list. And as you can see, it's broken down by individual taskings. You can enter up to 10 of them total. Most people enter between three, five, maybe seven but there is room for 10. What we're looking for here, on the first box, we're looking for a little bit of a narrative of the task itself. 
And then over to the side, we're looking for a percentage of time it takes to do that task. And then for the frequency, that's a drop down menu that's listed as daily, weekly, monthly, annually. There's, there's several choices on there. And then there's also a spot where you can rank your task. So the ones that are most important, you can rank them one to five, one to seven, one to 10, however many you put in there. So this is the page that's probably gonna take you the longest, it's the most involved. As you're gonna see on the future pages, most of those are gonna give you a, a place to choose the choice. This is the one where you have to put the most work into. So if I were you, while you're doing this page, even if you're not walking away from your desk, just every once in a while, just hit that um, red save button to make sure you don't lose anything. Just in case there was a um, power surge or any other kind of unpredicted issue with your computer, that way you won't have any trouble going back into it. Now, the rest of the questionnaire is set up like this. Um, these are the job functions. There's 14 of them, and they basically read as a best choice. This uh, particular area is data responsibility. And if you look at the top, the very first choice says, I compare or inspect items against the standard. Um, all these choices are listed in weight of responsibility. So the very top choice is going to have the least amount of responsibility. And as you go further down, you're going to see the respons responsibility is going to increase. In fact, by the time you get to the bottom of this particular one, it says, I formulate hypotheses, experimental designs, or concepts based on original research. So that's that's about as responsible as you can get for data responsibility. So what I recommend on, on these slides, again, it's, it's, it looks like multiple choice, but you can only choose one. So read the statement. And in this case, it's for data responsibility. Just start at the top, work your way down, find the one that you think is the best description of what you do for this particular job factor. And then go down one more, just to make sure that the one down below is actually more than what you do. And then you can choose the correct one from there. There's also a box down at the bottom of each one of these pages where you can add additional comments. And that comes in handy if you want to elaborate on the choice that you made, or if you couldn't find something that was an ideal fit for the choice that you made, you can go down to that box below and provide more detail on, on what your actual responsibility is for that particular job factor. This is a list of all the job factors. There's 14 of them. We just looked at the one for data responsibility. And as you can see, there's a wide variety of different ones. There's judgment, there's math, there's education. Um, the way we wrote the questionnaire, we have to take into account lots of different job titles. So this is just our way kind of taking everything and getting into a more generalized format. So that's why there's all these different choices and all these different type job factors. Some of these are gonna be more important for your job and some are gonna be a lot less. So it's just gonna depend as you go through, you'll be able to figure that out. I wanna show you a couple of slides here. This is still part of the, um, the job factors. We have um, education and experience. And the thing we're looking for here, we're actually, this is more of an opinion type answer. From your perspective, we wanna know what you think it would take for somebody to come in new to do your job. We're looking for um, experience level, we're looking for education level. And again, we're not necessarily looking for what your current qualifications are. Maybe you've been in that job for a while and you've added some degrees to your resume, but um, in this case, we're just looking for an entry level requirement for your job from your perspective. So this is the education page. And again, it reads from top to bottom what the, um, the easiest of requirements, and then it works its way up as you, get, as you go through. And same thing for the experience requirements. So a lot of jobs have changed um, over the years, and depending on how long it's been since your last study, you know, technology has made some jobs easier, it's made some of them tougher. So we just need to get an idea from your perspective what you think the ideal education and experience level should be for your job. There are two pages on here that are actually multiple choice. And you can see by the, um, by the titles why that's the case. We have unavoidable, unavoidable hazards and sensory requirements. We're not trying to make you just pick one. We want you to let us know if there's more than one of these that apply. So these are the only two of the job factors that are truly multiple choice.
this is um, everybody's favorite page of the questionnaire. It's the last page, actually. It's the additional comments. And this is what I mentioned earlier when I said if you do a group questionnaire, you can list all of the people that participated in the additional comments box. And um, if there's anything in the questionnaire that you don't think we covered thoroughly that you'd like to add more detail, this is where you can do it, right here on the additional comments page. If you want to print your questionnaire, um, this is actually a good thing because, um, like I said, once you finish it, you can't make any more changes, but you can still have a copy of it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you still have everything um, expanded under, under the expand all selections button. And the best way to, um, I say print, but the best way to keep your questionnaire is as a PDF. So when you click on the print button, it's automatically going to be defaulted to the save to PDF option. So if that's all you want to do is have an electronic copy for yourself, you just click save, give the file a name, and then save it to your hard drive. If you actually want to print it on paper, then you, do, you would just change the option from save to PDF to your actual printer, and you can print it out. And when you print it out, it's going to have all of your um, answers to go with all the questions. So you'll have a, a full account of how you filled out your questionnaire. There is one thing I do want to mention, though, if you decide to actually print it. Um, our questionnaire is user friendly on all browsers, but for printing purposes, due to scaling, I recommend using um, Google Chrome. If you use that, you won't have anything scrunched together. It'll all print out nice and, nice and clean. I do want to mention for the supervisors that when you go to um, review your employee questionnaires, this is what you're going to do. You're going to log into your own. And by the way, just because you've finished your own and hit the complete button so your supervisor can review your questionnaire, you still have access to your subordinates. So you'll still be able to go in there. Even when you're completely done with your own, you can still go into your subordinates questionnaires and conduct your reviews. There's some buttons across the top. There's a home button, the one next to it says my employees. You're gonna click on that tab. And when you do, that's gonna take you into where your um, employees are at. And there'll be like a link for each one of them. And again, you can't conduct a review for your employee JPQs unless they've completely finished it and submitted it to you. So if you go in there and you can't find an employee and you, and you know they, that you're their supervisor, that just means that they haven't completed their questionnaire yet. So if you have any concerns about that, just ask them and make sure that, they, that they're still working on it. And that's why you won't be able to see it until they're done. All right, that's, um, that's pretty much it for the questionnaire itself. I just want to give you an overall view of what's going to be happening for the next few weeks. Um, basically, the, the questionnaire is going to be open. So after you've seen this session and you want to go out there and get started, you can. Um, just log in using the information that I showed you earlier. We're using um, Friday, April 1st as our two week deadline for employee completion. And then we add an extra week on top of that for the supervisors to complete their reviews. So as of now, we're looking to finish the questionnaire process by um, Friday, April 8th. So once we have everything completed on the questionnaires, we're gonna, um, do our classification review based on what we've gotten back from you all. We're also going to conduct a market study. And that's where we go out and we compare Lexington Fayette County to um, other municipalities around the area to see how you stack up. And then once we get all of our information and all of our ducks in a row, we're going to do a draft report. And usually with the draft report, there's a lot of um, back and forth between us and human resources to get that exactly the way we want to get it before we present a final report. So again, the questionnaire, it's the foundation of the study. It's one of the most important parts of the study because we're getting the direct, the information that we really need directly from the employees and the supervisors. So your, your participation is greatly appreciated and, great, and greatly encouraged. Are there any questions? One moment, sir. I think we have one here from Chris okay. Dent. I'll, I'll just let him allow him to talk here. Sure. Go ahead, Chris. 
Yeah, quick question. Um, I know I have a lot of employees who are going to be off next week due to Fed County spring break. I was wondering about the availability of moving that deadline back a little bit because some of them are even off part of this week for that as well. Um, we can certainly discuss that with human resources. I mean, if there's no um, big sch a schedule crunch, I'm not aware of one, but um, that would be something I can't say. I can't make that decision myself. We'll have to coordinate it with human resources and make sure that they're okay with that too. But Thank you. It's, it's not unusual for us to do that. We, we come up with our standard deadline, but things do pop up along the way, like what you were just mentioning. So we'll see if we can do that. All right, I think we also have a question from uh, Frank here. Let me bring him in to allow him to talk. Go ahead, Frank. Yes, I was wondering, um, so will supervisors have the ability to make adjustments to to uh, the subordinate uh, JPQs, you know, for items that they may challenge or take issue with, or perhaps don't even want to disclose. I, I mean, for whatever reason. I mean, you know. well, in the interest of giving the employee their freedom, um, the supervisor cannot change anything, but they can certainly add to it or contest it. Um, when you go to do the supervisor review, it's basically a side by side comparison. So when you look at what the employee chose for a specific job factor. If you think mm -hmm. they added too much responsibility or not enough, then you can make your own individual choice. And we'll see that when we're doing our review. Typically, if, if the choice is off by one or two, that's not a big deal. But if the supervisor, if the employee says they have a responsibility of a seven for a particular item, and the supervisor says, no, that's more like a two, that's going to um, raise our concerns. And we'll, we'll, we'll address that if we see it. I will say that's pretty rare because like I was saying earlier, most of the time with the supervisors, they're just going in there and they're kind of bolstering what the employee has already put together. And, and yeah, there are some minor disagreements, but most of those are in a positive way. But um, again, you can't, you can't change anything, you can't believe anything that the employee said, but you have every opportunity to um, dispute it or to show your perspective on that particular item. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I'm not seeing any other questions. Oh, well, wait. Oh, now we do. Hold on. All right. uh, I'll bring uh, this lady in to speak. Actually, she don't have her audio on. Uh oh. I'll bring in uh, this gentleman. Okay, go right ahead. Sparker four. S. Yes, Parker, hello. You got to turn your microphone on. Uh, S. Parker, can you hear me? S. Parker, four. There you go. You got to turn your microphone on. All right. Go back. I think Chris Dent has another question. Go ahead, Chris. It looks like there's some questions in the chat. I see S. Parker Four is one of those questions, so I just want to let you know. Um, I didn't already. Okay, where's that? We have, uh, let's see here. I'd like to ask, will we, will the employees receive a final copy, whether it's challenged or not, of, of the version of the JPQ once uh, it's completed? You know, I'm sure it'll be available online or wherever they publish it at, but will you all send out those or? Well, human resources will have access to um, the completed questionnaires. The employees can, like I said earlier, they can, they can print a version of what they completed. And then the supervisor can also do the same thing with what they completed. But as far as us handing out actual printed copies, that's not, that's not our intention, but human resources will have access to every, everything from our database. 
I'm just going to go ahead and read a couple of these questions because uh, for some reason it won't come through. Uh, one would like to know, will supervisors re receive an automatic notification when their employee has submitted their JPQ and is ready for supervisory review? That is um, not something we have the capability of right now. We're working on doing that. Um, that's come up from other sessions. So um, the best way to, to find out for sure is just to log into your own JPQ. But if you're seeing your subordinates on a regular basis, and you, you can just ask them if they've finished yet. But um, until we get that added to our um, repertoire, the best thing to do would be just to occasionally check your own JPQ and go to that My Employees tab and, and see who all has completed their questionnaires. OK, another question we have. Uh, is when will the firm provide the final report to the council and the and HR? It's usually a two or three month process just to get the um, the draft report squared away. And I'm not aware of what the timetable is on the, um, the final report. All right. Is uh, Craig Prater had a question. Is teleworking going to be taken into account in this survey? That's Definitely something you can certainly add that into the remarks. Is, are you talking about as far as um, whether that will be something we recommend or I'm not sure what you mean by how it's going to figure in. I mean, if, if that's something you want to recommend that you think your job would be an ideal candidate for that or. Yeah, I'm not sure they haven't responded yet. There we go. Okay. Here we go uh, for salary recommendations. Is teleworking going to be taken into account in this survey for salary recommendations? That's I'm going to have to um, ask somebody higher up on that one because I'm, I'm working on the questionnaire portion, but I'm not actually in on the level where they're doing the actual analysis. So I'm sorry I don't have a direct answer for that, but I'll, I'll, I'll find one and get with HR on that. All right. Um... Someone here has asked, uh... They notice their supervisor is not listed under the box and they want to know should, who should she notify to say their supervisor is not listed here? Uh, human resources. And in turn, anytime there's a database issue like that, because that just means that we didn't have that person's name when we compiled this database. So if you let human resources know about that, they'll let us know and we'll get, our, we'll get an update into our database for that. Okay. And S. Brewer would like to know, can she get an email copy of this webinar? And she gives me her email address. So is that something you can be able to do? Are you talking about the PowerPoint presentation itself? I believe so, yes. Can you email me a copy of this webinar? If so, and then like I said, I got her email address here. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll check with Human Resources because they have a copy of all of this. In fact, they even have one, I believe, that has a audio on it. It's kind of like an abbreviated version of, or basically a, a generic version of what we just did. But um, yeah, I, there, there's definitely more material available. There's tip sheets. And um, like I said, there's the PowerPoint itself available through human resources. All right. Let's see if I got all the questions on here. If I've already answered your question or asked your question, you might want to drop your hand down there. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions unless I'm just missing somebody. Oh, well, we got one. Go ahead, Mike. Mike C, go ahead. Hey, I was trying to figure out, will we have an opportunity to review or appeal the supervisor review? Well, it's not really um, that kind of process. I mean, because again, we're, from, from our standpoint, we're just trying to get the perspective from both. If there is actually a real concern about a, a specific issue within the questionnaire where there's a really major disagreement, between the employee and the supervisor, then again, we go through human resources for this, but we, we would address it our, ourselves because every, every one of these questionnaires, before we put it into a database and start crunching a bunch of numbers, it's going to be reviewed by him and I. So if we see some disparities like you're talking about, something that serious, we would, we would raise, we would respond to that concern. Thank you. Oh. Sir. All right, and I uh, think Justin, Justin, you go right ahead. You want to turn your microphone on? 
so my job changed quite a bit with the pandemic. Um, and once all the restrictions are lifted, I assume a lot of those duties will come back. Do I include those or not? I would, because we, we still don't know um, if we're out of this yet, if it's going to come back. Sure, hope not. But um, I would say adding some comments to the additional comments at the end of your questionnaire would be a big help. I mean, if you just say what you just said about you know, some of these duties have changed due to um, COVID, you know, that, that would be a good heads up for us if you could just put that in your questionnaire. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Um, question here, how are vacant positions reviewed? Does the supervisor fill out the JPQ, which could be a disadvantage to a new hire as a supervisor may or may not uh, know the in or out of the position? Right, in well, you're talking about hopefully a position where it's just a single incumbent. So um, if, if that's the case, that's the only way we can get a review is through the supervisor. Um, it's going to be obvious when we review it that's coming from one side, but um, that's 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 our best option until until the position is filled. Okay, and uh, Frank, I'm bringing you in again. Did you have another question? Yeah, I did. I was going to ask. You know, he mentioned. Um, filling these out in a group he mentioned that that i guess where possible they can just list who was involved in the jpq or what have you i guess my question is will there be an effort to consolidate if they're not filled out in group if you have people perform you know with the same title performing sort of similar duties but you know quite it may be different in certain aspects will there be an effort well, to consolidate these right um the way i would the way i would best um describe that you know we, we encourage the group questionnaire for people that just want to get together and do it as a group. But if you if you actually show up to that group and you don't feel like your voice is being heard, by all means, fill out your own questionnaire. We're not discouraging individual participation. We're just trying to give a, another option by offering the group participation. So um, if we get- well, I, didn't, I didn't know if that decision would be above our head in terms of like if upper management is going to get them and, you know, and say, okay, well, all these guys have the same job title. Oh, no, no, no. You see, it's, it's, it's totally, well, they it's have totally a decision. To, okay. All right. Totally up to the individual. There, there should be no um, orders from above saying everybody get together as a group. I mean, if you're trying to um, encourage participation, that's one thing. But um, again, we're not trying to take away the right of anybody filling out their own individual I got you. questionnaire. There's just some cases where a person is not willing to do it on their own. And by participating in a group, it just gives them a chance to have their voice heard. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, it looks like Justin may have another question. His hand's back up. Let me go ahead, Justin. Oh, no, sorry. I just didn't put it down yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no problem. And we got uh, no question there. And Sparker for, I believe she said she didn't have a microphone, but we'll check it once again. Okay. I really don't see any other questions. Frank, did you have another question? No, sir. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much. All Thank right. You to both of you guys. All right. And uh, I'm looking at the chat questions right now. See what else hasn't already been answered. Uh, let's see. I think Mike C already had his answered. I believe that's all the questions I see up here. All right. Well, that's actually really good. I mean, when I do these in person, you'd be surprised how few questions we get. So it's actually nice to have a little, little bit of back and forth on, on this one. So I appreciate everybody attending and for asking your questions. And um, if anything else comes to mind, you can uh, get in touch with Human Resources and they'll let us know. And we'll be glad to, to help you out along the way. All right, I guess I, I would, well, let me make sure one last time here. Make sure there is an AS. Okay, here's one question. If you are not in good term with your supervisor, would you address any of that dispute between the employee and supervisor on this? We're not looking for anything personal. Um, that would definitely be an internal issue that you'd have to 
bring up within the organization. We're just trying to get both perspectives on the job. So again, there could be disagreements on that, but um, that's going to show up in the responses, especially since most of the questions are just choosing the best answer. If your uh, employee's going to choose their best answer, supervisor is supervisor's going to choose their best answer. And if there's a huge disparity there, then we'll do some investigating. All right, here's another question. Will upper level managers be able to review the JPQs if they aren't direct supervisors? Not electronically. I mean, the only thing they could do is see a paper copy of the final results. They wouldn't have any true input into it, but they would have the ability to see the final results. Okay, and one person here, I hope I'm reading this correctly. Does every employee get to submit the form? I'm assuming that it says forum, but I believe they meant form. Oh yeah, yeah. As far as um, the questionnaire, everybody, everybody that's um, unless you're a brand new employee that wasn't there when we gathered this database, um, everybody that's been there should be included in this database. And if if you're new and you're not and you want to contribute, then we can get you added. It's just a lot of times when somebody's brand new, they're still learning their job, let alone trying to evaluate their job. All right, Mr. Foster, I don't believe there's any other questions. All right. Well, yeah, thank you all very much for attending and look forward to getting this going. I'll be ending it now then. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for your help. All right. No problem.